All right, so I didn't know this was supposed to be heartfelt or anything. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, I just want to say, uh, starting off, this is kind of strange with everyone here, because uh, Josh and I just don't get this attention at home. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so probably about a month ago, Josh and I were thinking, we were like, we should probably get started on a speech or something. Uh, and then about a week ago, uh, we were like, hey, we should probably get started on this speech. <laughs> and then uh, last night uh, at 11 o'clock, Josh looks at me on the couch and he's like, hey, you want to get started on this speech? Uh, and so then we proceeded to write the speech in the morning. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, so we'll start off with this. Uh, ben and I have known each other for a little while. Uh, but yeah, um, right now, in this moment, I want you all to strap in, because I'm going to take you on a journey, all right? I'm going to take you on a journey back in time, all right? Back to when Ben was just a wee little tyke. All right, now I'm not talking about high school Ben, all right? We're not even talking about Ben when he's just a wee little tot. No, 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 no. The journey goes way back to when Ben was fresh out the womb. <laughs> All right, now, now I want you to get in the moment again. Take a second to vividly imagine this moment with me in the doctor's office when Ben is being born, at least as far as you're comfortable doing. Uh, <laughs> so this journey starts with fetus Ben crawling out of his comfortable dwelling and into the unknown world that we know. And in that moment, one thing became very, very clear. Ben's got a massive head. <laughs> no. All right. Now, when I say baby Ben had a big head, I'm not talking about ego. That's not an issue. I'm talking about raw head size. <laughs> Just the sheer quantity of noodle up there. You know, the physical space that his head displaced. All right, Ben couldn't waddle into a room without the sheer mass and physical presence of his head being sensed by the entire room. All right, and <laughs> legend has it that since he was born, his head has not grown a bit. <laughs> All right. But <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. That was just when Ben was the wee little tot. I'm going to fast forward a little bit more into the recent pre into the present. All right. I want you to stay with me here. All right. Stay in the moment. And let me paint you a picture of about a month ago when the love between Ben and Kylie was blossoming just like a baby calf blossoms into a full grown cow. So, so about a month ago, I realized that since I was Ben's younger brother, I should probably give t Kylie a talking to. I said, Kylie, sweet little old Kylie, my young blossoming cherubic Kylie, come sit on Uncle Nate's lap. Let me whisper some wisdom into that ear. All right. Now, before I continue, I guess I should make one quick disclaimer. Ben is someone who crosses his T's and dots his I's every point in his life. There's not a single unplanned action or uncalculated word that leaves his mouth, all right? You know, Josh and I, through this process, we're scratching our heads for any embarrassing moment, and we couldn't think of a single one. Um, ben has covered his bases throughout his entire life. Uh, we have nothing on him. <laughs> but don't let that go to your head, Ben. You don't need it getting any bigger. <laughs> So I sat Kylie down and I said, listen, my pleasant pumpernickel plum, <laughs> in all relationships, marriages, the woman is always right. You know, even if the woman's wrong and the man is right, the woman's always right. But I said, Kylie, you kind of got the short end of the stick in this relationship. Ben's just going to be the right one in this one. Like, it's, <laughs> you can't do anything about it. He's just going to be right. But um, 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, and I should know too, you know, I spent 20 years with that man. Um, well, let me rephrase that. I spent 20 years with a massive head. Only, only in the recent years has he grown the body to actually match it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, uh, that's pretty much the end of my notes. I, I said at the end, insert something meaningful, and I guess that's probably where Josh comes in. <laughs> I, I, I figured after hearing what Nathan had to say about Ben that I should probably step in and say a few nice things, so I, um, I wrote a few things down here. Ben, ben is the, the kindest, most generous, Handsome, Ben, I can't read your handwriting here. I'm just gonna have to go off the one I wrote. <laughs> so, so I've also known Ben the, the majority, m m all of my life, really. Um, and I, I, wanna, I wanna go back to the first time that Kylie sort of, I won't say entered our lives, but that I knew she was, you know, becoming a part of our lives. And, I, I had just gotten off of work, and I come home, it was the week of the E-Town Fair. I was getting ready for the fair, I was gonna go meet some friends, and I see Ben kinda getting his things together. I was like, oh, you, you going somewhere tonight? He's like, yeah, I'm going to the E-Town Fair. And I was like, oh, you, who are you going with? And you know, I'm expecting him to say David or Zara, one of his buddies, and he was like, oh, it's, you know, a friend. And I was like, well, that was kinda, well, who are you going with? And he's like, going to the fair with a friend. And I was like, ben, ben, who are you going? Up, Ben has never been on a date at this point, okay? I, I've never even heard, heard him say like a celebrity was like attractive, like, you know, th you know, there were some questions leading up to this point. Um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, ben, ben goes, well, I'm, I'm going with Kylie. And I was like, oh, okay. And I, I walk up the stairs and I get about halfway up the stairs and I was like, what the heck did he just say? And, and I don't want to push it, right? I don't, I don't want to make things weird. So I call Emily, my sister, right away. And I, and I don't know if you remember this night or not, but I called Emily and I was like, Emily, what do you know about Kylie and Ben? And she's like, what are you talking about, Kylie and Ben? And I was like, Emily, you tell me right now. What do you know about Kylie and Ben? And she's like, okay, fine. Don't, don't make a big deal about it. I don't want to ruin anything. But, you know, ben and, you know, Ben's been texting me the last, last couple of days, you know, like, sending me like the message that he wanted to send to Kylie to like ask her out, make sure it was right and this and that. And so Kylie, I want you to take this as a note. Since day one, Ben has done everything he can to do right by you. Aww. Like Nathan said, we spend countless minutes trying to come up with these speeches. Um, <laughs> And, you know, like he said, find some embarrassing stuff to say. And, you know, you just, it's like he said, you can't, you can't do it for Ben. He's, he's too good. He is, he, we, we look at all the stories we have as kids and Ben, Ben's kind of like the hero or the funny guy. And Nathan and I kind of look like the stupid ones. <laughs> and, and there was, there was a time that Ben, Ben came up with this game, and I'm sure there was some sort of incentive for this game, but clearly it wasn't good enough for us to remember it to this day. But Ben, ben blindfolds us and sends us out into the backyard and says, I've hidden a football in the backyard and you're gonna find it. Now it was Ben's job to make us, you know, not run into anything, but you know, Nathan has the scar on his forehead to prove that that didn't work. So, so Kylie, if Ben ever gets the blindfold out, you don't wanna be a part of that game. Um, gro growing up with Ben isn't easy when, when he's the superior brother. I mean, the, the guy flies helicopters. How, how, he's in college, I'm a, he flies helicopters. Okay, that's just, you can't, you can't touch that. And um, he, he does no wrong, but he's, with that he's crafty. He, he thinks things through. Um, there, there's a story my dad loves to tell when, um, when I was young, he stumbled across a bunch of puncture holes in my mattress. And, yeah, all right, I'll admit, it was one of those mattresses that was like plastic in case you pee the bed, like whatever. Um, and, 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 well, at the time, you know, I, I was sticking to my guns, deny, deny, deny. I've never seen that before in my life, Dad. I don't know how those got there. And, um, well, what I had discovered is that a freshly sharpened number two pencil makes a very fun kind of sound when you stab it into the mattress, and that was amusing to me. 
Well, well, in walks, you know, ben, he kind of wobbled because of the head thing, but he, he, wa <laughs> he walks into the room and he goes, hey, Josh, was it difficult to push the pencil into the mattress? And I was like, no, it was really easy. And um, I'm pretty sure I was spanked after that one. Um, <laughs> so, Ben, there were many times growing up that when I thought something was unfair, Ben, or my dad, my dad would make the comment, he goes, Josh, if Ben jumps off a cliff, are you gonna jump off after him? Well, at the time that was funny to me, or it was silly, I was like, well, that's stupid, cause Ben's not gonna jump off a cliff. Well, I've decided that if Ben's jumping off a cliff, he's so carefully calculated his landing, his trajectory, he's done all the math, that that landing spot is exactly, we're, we're not dying. So if Ben jumps off a cliff, yeah, I'll jump off after him. <laughs> and that's all the evidence I need to know that when Ben chose Kylie, there is not a more perfect woman in this world for him than her.